coming up, we hear how big data is being used to help those experiencing food insecurity across Australia. Stay tuned. According to the UN Hunger Report, 811 million people in the world were undernourished last year. Now, this represents roughly 10% of the overall global population and is an increase on previous years. Today, we'll hear from the Art of More and Food Bank Australia on how they're addressing this issue using data-driven analytics. Before we jump into the interview, let's take a look at their story. Food Bank Australia is the largest food rescue and relief organisation in Australia. Our mission is to end hunger in Australia. We do that by working collaboratively with the entire food supply chain from producers and farmers right through to retailers. We collect food and then redistribute it to frontline charities around Australia so that they can provide food relief to people in need. We need to better understand how we are achieving that service in order to ensure that we can really reach everyone who needs to be assisted. The Art of More is providing a fantastic picture of food insecurity and distribution of food relief. Doing this kind of work, it's data for good, forecasting and understanding nuances in communities and to be able to start to predict where Food Bank needs to apply its efforts. We're using Azure services to host our immense databases and the Power BI suite to do data visualisation to bring this to life and operational reality for Food Bank. I'm joined today by Scott McLaughlin, founder and CEO of The Art of More, and Sarah Pennell, General Manager of Business from Food Bank Australia. Thank you both for joining us. Great to be here. Yeah, thanks for having us. Now, in the Western world, it's easy to think that food inequality is something that really only exists in developing countries. But this is an issue that people in all countries face. And it's also something that's been compounded in the last couple of years due to the pandemic. Sarah, let's start with you. Can you share a little bit about how Food Bank Australia is helping those in need? Thanks, Ben. Yes, we are uh, the largest food relief organisation in Australia. And we do our work by uh, partnering with the food industry and collecting food from uh, every part of the food supply chain and providing it to charities who distribute it to people in need. Um, a lot of people think that there, are, uh, there isn't a food insecurity problem in Australia, but there very much is. We've recently released a report which showed that more than a quarter of Australians have experienced food insecurity uh, in the last year. So we like to make the point that it's not just those people on the street uh, sleeping rough. It's very likely to be someone in your street. Um, you're just not aware of it. That's some some really interesting data that you've brought forward there. And it's it's so easy to think that those on the street are the only ones going hungry when it could be people in our neighbourhood or people even live right next door. Now, Scott, you saw an opportunity here to help provide insights with your vulnerable Australia model. Can you maybe take us through how you pulled this data together? Yeah, sure. I mean, when looking at a complicated issue like food insecurity, we wanted to cast the net really wide in terms of available data sources so that we could start to understand what the predictive elements of food insecurity were. So we built a, a massive relational data set and data lake of 70 and growing data sources to figure out what the predictive variables and predictive influence on food insecurity are. And do you think maybe you could step us through that model and show us how that works in action? Yeah, sure, Ben, thanks. Here is the Food Bank Hunger Map dashboard. What you can see here is the total number of kilos being supplied versus the total demand across the country. This also enables us to understand the number of people that are affected by food insecurity and the specific community segments that they come from, as well as the areas with the greatest demand and the areas with the greatest supply gap. When we drill into South Australia, we can start to see contributing factors at a state level. And then when we drill further down into the local government area of the Barossa, we can see not only this, the community segments that are most affected by food insecurity and the specific small areas 
that are contributing to the demand and the supply gaps, but we can also see the agencies and the contribution they're making to closing the gap on food insecurity in that specific local area. Now, really, really great to see how you're bringing that data together and gaining those insights, especially finding where that food is needed and where that gap is. And most importantly, all the way down to that kind of, you know, governmental level, uh, how many people are going hungry. Now, to make this work, you mentioned that you are collecting this data from over 70 data sources. Can you share a little bit about how you bring that data together and, and maybe ratify that data to get the insights that you do? Yeah, sure, Ben. It's really a process that's a little unique to us, which is the combination of multiple data science disciplines and and methodologies to bring those data sources together in a relational way and give them context with each other. Um, So what we also built was an adaptive intelligence system. So effectively, what that means is that the system we built has been designed specifically to ingest more data and continuously learn about vulnerability around the country. When it came to food insecurity, this enabled us to assess 8,500 variables to determine the key drivers of food insecurity. Really, really insightful to see how you're bringing that huge amount of data together to be able to identify those areas of need. Now, it seems like this kind of data model and the work that Food Bank Australia is doing is really a perfect match Sarah, can you tell us how this type of data has been helping Food Bank Australia address the needs around the country? Yes, Ben. Um, in the past, we have uh, acted very responsively in that we have simply provided food to those charities that have requested it from us. Um, what we now know is that doesn't necessarily lead to a comprehensive network reaching everybody who needs food relief. So we need to become more proactive about ensuring that uh, everybody who uh, has a need um, is being assisted. And to do that, we have to have a a clear and comprehensive picture of what what is going on, both in terms of where the need is and where we are currently supplying that need and where we're not supplying that need. So that's where the hunger map comes in and that's what uh, the Art of More is doing for us. So exciting to see how you've been able to bring that model and use that data to be able to impact the way you're meeting that need. Now, Scott, this is a journey that the Art of More has been on for a while. What are some of the lessons you've learned along the way that you would share with others who are who may be looking to pull together their own large data set for their own business? Uh, ben, without doubt, it's racing to a beta. I, I feel like that when you're building such complicated solutions to very complex issues like food insecurity and vulnerability in communities, that it's not until people see, feel and touch your solution that they can really believe or comprehend what you've done. And certainly I'd say early when we were trying to explain to people our approach, um, many people just couldn't believe what we were doing was possible. It's a really great lesson there, especially when working with a, a complex solution around getting to a beta or a proof of concept to help prove that point and and drive that further forward. Now, Sarah, I suspect this is really just the beginning of the use of a data set like this, and and I expect there are probably more insights to be gained. Can you maybe let us, give us a peek into the future around how you see the Vulnerable Australia model being used going forward? You're right, Ben. This has really opened up a a huge uh, new opportunity for us, and and we've been uh, coming up with different potential uses since the day we saw the first beta version, as as Scott said, um, we believe there's a lot more we can do. At the moment, we're looking at the distribution of food relief. We believe there's huge potential with regard to the collection of the food itself from uh, the food industry um, and from uh, places of production around Australia. We would like to look at Uh, other programs we do other than everyday food relief, such as um, our school breakfast programs, emergency and disaster relief. So we think the potential is just enormous. It's really exciting to see how you're looking to apply this model in the future and continue to have an impact in a country that is near and dear to my heart. Scott, Sarah, thank you so much for taking the time to share the great work you're both doing to help those in need. Thanks for having us. My pleasure. And of course, if you'd like to learn more about the Vulnerable Australia model, the art of more, or donate to Food Bank Australia, you can follow the links on screen. 
If you'd like to learn more about building your own big data solution, you can head over to Microsoft Learn to get started. With modules covering everything from the fundamentals of Azure through to developing an augmented reality experience with HoloLens, certification guidance, and even live interactive shows on Learn TV. Microsoft Learn will help you arrive at your goals faster, with more confidence, and at your own pace. Now, if you have a story you'd like to see featured on an upcoming episode of Customer Tech Talks, you can reach out to us at cttalk at microsoft.com to get started. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn so you can catch all the latest episodes as they come out. Thanks again for watching, and we look forward to seeing you on the next Customer Tech Talks.